Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. In this episode, I'm going to discuss a post on the Google Research blog called Looking Back at 2019 and Forward to 2020 and Beyond. It's a very long post in which Google reviews all the research that took place in 2019 and what they're going to focus on in 2020. And I find it very, very interesting. Uh, the first thing that I find very interesting is like the breadth of applications, of AI applications that Google is working on. And the second thing I find very interesting is that some of these applications, like automated machine learning, seem to be taking us closer to general artificial intelligence, at least according to my opinion. One of the trends that uh, Google is working a lot on is AI for social good. There's, in general, there's a trend in using AI for social good, and there are many opportunities there. I'm not sure whether Google has a genuine interest in this or whether they believe it helps with their brand, do no evil, it's well known that uh, Google in the last couple of years, it faces some issues with this, with this brand since it was uncovered that it was working with the US Army on various projects. And uh, this created a few issues with uh, many of, of the employees of the company who weren't really very fond of that. And But in any case, Google is, this is one of the areas that Google is focused on. They've done work on modeling floods and forecasting floods. So that's something very interesting. They've also applied the machine learning to support childhood learning. They've created an app called Bolo that uses speech recognition technology to tutor students in real time and has helped around 800,000 children to read stories. And they've also created the Socratic app that helps high schoolers with higher education uh, topics. And these are really some examples of the things that uh, Google is working on in this, in this area. They seem to be doing lots of partnerships here with foundations in order to promote AI for social good. For example, they've worked with uh, Médecins Sans Frontières in order to create a smartphone application that uses image recognition tools to help clinical staff in low resource settings. And this is currently being piloted in Jordan. And they do this in order to, in order to analyze antimicrobial images in order to advise for the appropriate antibiotics to use. So plenty of applications there. When we're talking about AI for social good, we're not really talking about a particular type of technology. We're talking about very diverse cases. It's just that all these cases, they are for, you know, their, their goal is to help society. And then there are some other applications that Google is discussing. Uh, there's some really like scientific applications. For example, they've managed to reconstruct, to do a 3D reconstruction of a fly brain, improve modeling of partial differential equations. And uh, they've also, quite interestingly enough, they've also created a deep learning model which can smell. Uh, so that's uh, quite exciting actually. Is the first. I mean, you don't really hear about creating AI for smelling <laughs> very often, and so it's it's really a first. Um, Google is also has also done a lot of work in assistive technology. For example, it has created an app called Lookout that helps people who have issues with their vision or they're blind, and they it can help them understand their surroundings better. Or Project Euphonia which performs personalized speech to tech, text recognition. That's something else. So again, various, very many different projects, many of them focused on social good. And some other areas which stand out is 
algorithms that make your phone more intelligent, uh, things like live captioning or translation or embedding translation services on a camera. So you can look, for example, on a sign, on a road sign, uh, which is written in Spanish, and then you can get the translation in English, things like that. Then I think the next area that Google is talking about is health. And I think this is where things get very, very interesting because we're talking about something which concerns all of us. And we're also talking about a huge part of the economy. So Google has done lots of progress in things like uh, creating deep learning models for mammography, diagnosing skin diseases, predicting the onset of acute kidney injury. And this is only a small sample of the things they've done. There's lots of work being done there. And another very impressive domain is quantum computing. So quantum computing is, you know, an area that we've been hearing a lot about, but no one really knows where it's going. Google is claiming that they've done lots of progress in this area, not to the extent that we're going to see any commercially available devices in the next few years, but uh, to the extent that, you know, we are in a much better position than we were a few years ago. Again, we, we can't really know where we're going to, to head with this, where we're heading with this. Some people believe that actually we will be able to have quantum computers in our offices. Others, you know, believe that this is not so much the case. Maybe quantum computers will just be, uh, you know, something that very big companies and organizations will be able to acquire. So it remains to see how this technology will progress. But one thing is certain is that it's going to be very disruptive since, for example, in what Google describes in this article is that they demonstrated that the computation, which would take 10,000 years on a conventional computer, it, it takes around 200 seconds in a quantum computer, which means that in domains like cryptography, uh, many algorithms will no longer be any useful. And then moving on, Google obviously being one of the top AI companies in the world. I mean, it's not an AI company, but it's definitely an AI first company. They've done tons of work in machine learning. I'm not going to go into much technical detail, but I want to talk a bit more about one area which I particularly I, I find very interesting, and that's AutoML. I'm working in this area as well. I'm working on a product called Datalist, which is an augmented analytics and automated machine learning product. It essentially automates 80-90% of the data science pipeline. And I'm a big fan of this field because I believe that data science is going to become more and more automated. So Google is working a lot on coming up with ways to automatically create neural network architectures that are suitable for different tasks. And that's huge. It's a very inefficient process, but once this process becomes efficient, we will be able to have models that perform amazingly well uh, in very different circumstances. And I mentioned earlier that some of the research that Google is doing is taking us closer to general artificial intelligence. And I think automated machine learning especially in the context of deep learning, is one such technology. And the reason being that with automated machine learning, with this technology, we could have, for example, let's say a robot, and then it could very quickly adapt to different circumstances. So for me, that's very, very important. And I, again, this technology right now requires lots of computational resources, but uh, Google outlines at least five different papers, uh, very good papers, um, which are improvements over older techniques. So, I mean, in the next few years, I'm sure we're going to see more and more of it coming out. And as computational power becomes cheaper, these techniques become more efficient, we can imagine these techniques becoming ubiquitous. And Google also has done lots of progress in natural language uh, processing. Uh, they outlined some new models in uh, translation. One of the most interesting things for me is that they created a neural network, uh, which instead of just translating from one language to the other, it translates from multiple languages at, at the same time. So it's a, it's a multilingual system. And apparently training a model on multiple languages at the same time improves performance. My guess is that 
like many concepts are similar from language to language. So actually the, the model is able to extract this information. And when it embeds this information in its weights, it comes up with some kind of universal language that we might be subconsciously all using. Very interesting piece of work. And then the rest of the article talks about the machine perception and computer vision, uh, which is obviously another area where Google has done, is, is, is very fond of understanding video and images better. I won't go into much detail here. And then some other projects. I mean, Google is involved in countless projects, but, but in any case, I think the takeaway for this like, like very long article, I mean, if you wanted to really look into each paper, each project, Individually, you would need, <laughs> I don't know, like 20 hours maybe or more to go through all of them. Um, the key takeaway is that we are, we are we're progressing a lot in, in technologies which will allow us to get closer to general artificial intelligence sooner than later. Like uh, we can create more powerful deep learning models. Uh, we get better language models, better models for perception. Maybe we will have quantum computers, who knows, in the near future, which means the computational capabilities uh, will just explode. And this means that uh, even, even if the technology to create real AI, even if real AI is not there yet, the different pieces seem to start to fall in, into place. And that, that for me is very exciting. If you're gonna read the full article, I mean, which is probably going to be interesting only if you are a machine learning person yourself. Uh, just go on the Google AI blog and look for the article with the title uh, Google Research, looking back at 2019 and forward to 2020 and beyond. Uh, I'll try to provide a very quick overview of the article uh, here regarding at least how the things that, that I find interesting. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for being here with me and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.